G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, this is exactly why I wouldn't touch yam and you couldn't pay me money to get into it. This is only what, a couple of days old, a week old or something like that and it's already having problems uh, and is having to be bailed out by you know people in the DeFi space. For anyone who's watching my channel, I am highly, highly skeptical of yield farming. I'm not going to say it's all a scam, you know, possibly, uh, you know, was it Wi-Fi, I think they call it, and, you know, Curve Finance or, or whatever it is and things like that, they, you know, they possibly could be legit, but YAM, like they've already told you, uh, you know, the, the developer said that the YAM token has uh, no value in it, but people are just, yeah, jumping in it, trying to get into the new big protocol. And basically, if you go down to the bottom, what happened is, uh, I'll read here. While YAM's outlook appeared bleak, when only one third of the required tokens would be contributed two hours into the campaign, widespread efforts from across the DeFi community quickly rallied uh, strong support for the protocol. The support includes efforts by CoinGecko, Synthetix, uh, and Curve Finance to encourage contributions to YAM's campaign, while numerous benevolent, benevolent YAM whales farm jam uh, on Uniswap to bolster the number of tokens allocated towards recapturing governance. So basically there was a bug in the system. They had to get a whole stack of uh, tokens together to uh, fork uh, to fork yam and basically sort of start another protocol. So yeah, stay away from it is my advice uh, and it's not financial advice, it's just my personal advice. Don't touch it. You know, it's brand new and it's already got stuff going wrong with it yeah I, I am highly skeptical of a lot of DeFi projects that are coming out at the moment now i am still bullish on DeFi, but the products that have been around for a while a majority of these new ones it just has scam written all over it you know I, I, yeah again you couldn't pay me enough to get into these things at the moment i, I just wouldn't touch them and look some of the DeFi projects that i got into could be uh, scams as well, but I just doubt it. They've been around for a while and they've been audited by, uh, you know, companies and things like that. You know, we'll we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, stay away from Yam would be my personal advice to you. Now, this was an interesting story uh, that I found the other day and I forgot to talk about. Basically, uh, MicroStrategy, which is a company that's listed on the Nasdaq, they have bought over twenty one thousand dollars in Bitcoin. It cost them two hundred and fifty million dollars to do it. And I think they own 0.01% uh, of all the Bitcoin that's out there. So it's a pretty big investment. Not 1%, but 0.01%. That's still a lot of Bitcoin. And again, it's, I mean, 21,000 Bitcoin out of, you know, 21 million in total Bitcoin. And there's not 21 million uh, Bitcoin anyway. There's been Bitcoin that's uh, been lost. So, yeah. Pretty, pretty ballsy of them, pretty, yeah, that, that's out there, that's brazen, you know, they've really gone out on a limb, but basically they said it's uh, their hedge uh, against, uh, you know, uh, inflation from the dollar. Now, I think this is only going to be one of many companies that are going to start to do this. Uh, I think, you know, the, the, modern, the modern monetary uh, program that they have at the moment, they're basically just printing, you know, the dollar into infinity, thinking nothing's going to happen. A majority of companies, uh, big companies, are going to do exactly the same. And I think this bull run is going to dwarf 2017 because of those exact reasons. Now, you know, it's that old saying, no one wants to be the first one to do it. Because, you know, in case it all goes wrong and then everyone laughs at you. But once, you know, a lot of people start to do it, no one wants to be the last one to do it. So now that other companies are coming out and, you know, saying, yes, we've gotten into Bitcoin and things like that, watch for other large companies to do exactly the same. They, they're going to want to hedge against uh, the dollar. You know, the dollar, there has to be some kind of... Uh, effect from just printing the way they have been you know there's more money being made but no one's gdp is going up at the moment everyone's gdp has got a, is going down you know they're high unemployment you know obviously you know the pandemic that's going around is you know again a cause of that and it doesn't look like we're any closer to a uh, a solution for that either so yeah watch for uh, a number of other companies uh, and even large uh 
investors, just people in general, people who now who have a bit of wealth, they're going to start to move into Bitcoin if they haven't, especially when they say big businesses and big hedge funds. And now that it's regulated and all the rest of it, you know, I have no idea what price Bitcoin is going to go to. But with the amount of people that are getting into Bitcoin now, uh, and well, more not so much people, but, you know, the 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 masses haven't got to Bitcoin yet. This is now the institutional money and they get in first. They're generally ahead of the game, not ahead of everyone, just ahead of the game, uh, which is the masses. So there's going to be more big companies get into it. And again, banks are going to start offering custody of cryptocurrencies and things like that. So once the banks start selling cryptocurrencies to people, they're going to be like, oh yeah, well, if my bank's selling it to me, uh, it's got to be good. And unfortunately, that's you know that's the way a lot of people think you know if the banks wouldn't touch it that and they wouldn't prior everyone was like oh no no that's got to be a scam and now that the banks you know will be offering it and selling it and taking custody of it for people all of a sudden their mindset's going to change and they're just going to go okay it is good and unfortunately they're going to be getting in you know when they've really missed you know the best time to get in and as i said in previous videos you know banks are going to charge you to hold custody of your cryptocurrencies and things like that so you know you buy a whole bitcoin and it goes to you know 250,000 let's say and i'm not saying it's going to 250,000 anytime soon but let's say it does you don't have $250,000 worth of bitcoin you've got you know whatever percentage uh, that's left after the bank take their cut. And they're going to be using that to, you know, do the same system that they do now. They're going to be lending it out to other people and, you know, margin trading and just trading in general and all the rest of it. So, yes, you may, you know, in theory have a Bitcoin if you do it through the banks, but you don't really have a Bitcoin and you're not getting uh, the most out of it. But again, as I spoke in other videos, you know, for some people who just don't understand cryptocurrencies and, uh, you know, you know basically computer sort of illiterate and things like that that would probably be the best place for them to have cryptocurrencies in a bank where they're going to take care of it all for you but very interesting 21 uh, 21,000 uh, bitcoin in one go and again they didn't just do this this is just the news has been released they would have did this a little while ago so i'm going to say they got in at a really good price but watch for other big companies uh to come out and say exactly the same and then yeah watch the the market really start to pump now, a follow-up from yesterday's uh, story that I did. Ethereum's gas pain. Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency by market uh, capitalization, was up Wednesday, trading around $388 and climbing 2.7% uh, in, uh, in 24 hours. But the gas fees are absolutely astronomical at the moment. They are ridiculous. This is so sad because basically at the moment, if you're like me, and you're not mega rich and don't, you know, have thousands and thousands and thousands of, you know, Ethereum, you just can't afford to use it. You know, it's going to cost you $40, you know, $30 to send some Ethereum somewhere. So let's say even if you had a whole Ethereum at the moment, which is about $300, to send it anywhere, you're going to lose 10%. Then if you decide you want to send it back, there's another 10%. You just lost 20% of your Bitcoin sending it, you know, to your to your wallet. And then when you want to send it back to cash it in, you know, you're going to have lost another 10% now. But I mean, obviously, I believe Ethereum's price is going to go up. But so are the gas prices. And that's what really concerns me is we're not even in the peak yet. And, you know, Ethereum, you know, it's got all this staking coming out. Staking is the last uh, thing that they should be worrying about at the moment. But unfortunately, it's the first thing that they will be worrying about because it's the whales and, you know, the institutional money, uh, you know, and governments and things like that. They're not going to worry about $40, $50 transaction fees. And so unfortunately, it'll be them that will be able to get in and they will pay those exorbitant fees. The average day, you know, the average Joe everyday user like you and me, Ether's no good to us. And that's really sad. I hope that uh, scaling solutions come out very quickly. I know that's part of uh, ETH 2.0, but unfortunately the first part of ETH 2.0, from my understanding, is the staking. And yeah, I don't think staking is what we really need to worry about. I think we really need to get the 
you know, the gas prices and, yeah, scaling solutions sorted first. But anyway, hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully, you know, when ETH 2.0 does come out or hopefully even before ETH 2.0 comes out, there are some scaling solutions because this is really, really sad news for anyone who's invested in Ether that doesn't have a lot of money. You know, again, if you've got, you know, not even a whole Ether, you, you wouldn't send it anywhere. You'd do nothing with it. You just couldn't afford to. It would cost you too much. Like I said, at $30... You know, you're losing 10% of your ether at the moment to send it anywhere and do anything with it. That's that's just too much. That that cuts out, you know, the masses, which is really, you know, where the big uh, the big inflows uh, need to be. Uh, first, you know, prices to really skyrocket. Institutional adoption is great, but if the masses can't use it, then it yeah, it really won't help ether's price. ETH's price uh, as good as what it could. I'm not saying it won't go up and go up by a lot. But yeah, if they don't get that sorted, that's an issue. All right, lastly, let's go have a look on CoinGecko and I'll just refresh this. See where we're at? Yep, so we're back up in that $366 billion mark. So again, it's up a little bit and Bitcoin's found its way back to that $11,500 range. Uh, you know, up 1.7%, but obviously it was down as well. So I think we got down to, again, it might have been 11100 11200 Oh, excuse me, but now we're up to eleven and a half thousand uh, dollars. We'll have to wait and see whether we can really break that sort of, you know, twelve thousand dollar mark. As I said in previous videos, uh, and not too long ago, I see uh, Bitcoin uh, trading sideways for a little while. I think we're gonna. It's gonna be a bit of a repeat of what we did before we had this major breakout, and it's gonna be that way, on and off. Uh, for some time, I, I think it's going to take us a while to get over that twelve thousand dollar mark. I mean, you know, maybe a week or two. I couldn't imagine it would last much longer than that. But you know, in saying that, it could it could go over it tomorrow, and also, you know, tomorrow it could drop down to ten and a half thousand or lower. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't know, but just my gut feeling uh, is that we trade sideways for a little bit, a little bit at least, probably till the end of this week, uh, and then hopefully we'll have seen whatever moves done. But let's have a look and see what the big gainers were. Woof, Numerare, 151%. Wow, well done. Swipe, 38%. Algorand, I've got me some Algorand, so I'm pretty happy with that. It was taking a while to move, and uh, Algorand's doing quite well for me now. So in the last seven days, up 70% and 30% in 24 hours, so I'm happy with that. Chainlink, that is on such a run. And I honestly think, Chainlink's not done. I think Chainlink is going to go a lot higher, a lot higher. Again, I couldn't tell you exactly what, but it would not surprise me if at the peak we see a 200, maybe even more dollar Chainlink. And even more, I mean, there's, you know, I've seen some videos from some people on Chain, uh, videos on YouTube of people talking about Chainlink, a thousand, two thousand dollars and things like that. Who knows? In, in all fairness, Chainlink uh, is something that I probably won't sell uh, at the hype of the bull run. I, you know, it, it went up during a uh, bear market, uh, and obviously now it's really starting to pump. Uh, I would just hate to sell Chainlink to find that it again we go through the next bear market and it just continues to go up. But in saying that, we'll have to wait and see if Chainlink gets to you know two thousand uh, dollars in the bull market. I will definitely be selling some of my chain link. There'll be no doubt about it. But if it gets to sort of that, you know, maybe hundred, two hundred dollar mark uh, at the end of this bull run, then I won't be selling any. I'll just hold on to it. Uh, I think that'll still be good value uh, for the long term uh, at that. But I don't know if chain link would be good value at two thousand uh, dollars in the sort of mid to short term. In the real long term, I think you know you'd probably still be all right. But again, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, you know, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But, oh, Nest Protocol, 228%. Thor, Thor Chain, 57%. Lisk, God, I remember when that was trading at a couple of dollars. Uh, and I mean, like a couple of dollars. I think it might even been up to around $12, $20 or something at one stage. So, you know, come back from the dead. It's at $1.67 now, and it's up 26%. So, yeah, interesting. Cosmos, uh, I am a fan of Cosmos, and I've got myself some of that. So uh, I was at a loss for a while. I've finally, uh, you know, got into the green on that, which is good. 
uh, Icon, something I haven't heard from a while, uh, moving up, Zillica Loop Ring. So anyway, uh, I'm not going to ramble on too long. Definitely still plenty of profits out there, and, and I think there would be no doubt about it at the moment. We are 100% you know, in a bull market right now. Anyone who says we're not, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe they're a lot smarter than I am, and they know something that I don't know. But uh, I think it's it, at the moment to me, it looks like 100% we are in the next bull market and I think we're still very, very early. And as I said in a video uh, not too long ago, I am still buying cryptocurrencies. Uh, I'm not really playing with the lower cap stuff too much at the moment. Uh, I will put a couple of dollars here and there into some of my projects, but really all my lower cap uh, positions, I've built them and now I'm just gonna let them ride and we'll wait and see what happens. But I'll constantly put money into Bitcoin, I'll constantly put money into Ethereum even though I can't do anything with it. Hopefully, you know, scaling happens sooner rather than later and, you know, we can move Ethereum around for less than, you know, 10% uh, gas prices of what it's worth. Uh, that would be good. I'll still possibly put some more money into XRP. I still believe in XRP and I think it, you know, the sort of 28 cents it's trading for now uh, is still quite cheap. You know, it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, XRP go to around about the $10 mark in this uh, next bull market and again there's videos out there uh, on YouTube that you can look up and allegedly there's people be that believe XRP is supposed to be a $10,000 coin a $10,000 stable coin uh, I mean if if XRP went to $10,000 I would be absolutely laughing that's something that I could actually become a millionaire of <laughs> <laughs> if XRP went to $10,000 a coin, I would be a millionaire. I'm not sure if I have enough of anything else to become a millionaire, but at least I'll be better off than uh, where I was when I started uh, if we have a, a good bull market uh, and, you know, I, I make some smart decisions and sell out at the right time. Not sell out because I won't sell at all, but cash some out, take some of the profits is probably a better way. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're still on that game train and I'll see you next time.